Red Magic, a sub-branded company of Nubia, released their very first smartphone just three years ago in 2018 and did so with a bang by releasing the world's first gaming smartphone with a cooling system. A few months later, they released the Red Magic Mars, the first phone ever with shoulder triggers. In 2019, they released the Red Magic 3 and 3S, which were the first phones to pack an actual cooling fan into a smartphone. In 2020, they brought us the world's first 144Hz refresh rate smartphone display with the Red Magic 5 and 5S. It's now 2021, and just a few months ago, Red Magic announced the Red Magic 6 and 6 Pro, which upped the ante in terms of screen refresh rates by bringing it all the way up to 165Hz. Just a few months later, Red Magic revealed the 6R, which brought gaming hardware to a phone that looks just like any other. And just as we thought the year is all but done for Team Red, they announced this the Red Magic 6S Pro, which builds on the success of the Red Magic 6 Pro, but goes the extra mile by adding a transparent backplate with an RGB fan, jumping up performance with the Snapdragon 888 Plus chipset, and increasing their Pro shoulder triggers to 450Hz, as well as their display touch sampling rate all the way up to 720Hz. It does all this and more while keeping the same great price. The Red Magic 6S Pro comes in two different color variants. You can pick it up in a solid backplate black cyborg color or the one that I have, which is the transparent ghost edition, which showcases the RGB fan under the hood there. And it looks absolutely phenomenal, writing with a gold pen showing you the different components under the hood. That includes a 5,050 milliamp hour battery, 66 watt flash wire charging, 5G, Wi-Fi 6E, Bluetooth 5.2 and NFC. We have Gorilla Glass 5 on the front, a glass back and an aluminum frame. That glass back, however, does pick up a fair share of fingerprint smudges. So you're gonna wanna use the included case in the box, which doesn't really prevent protection from the back plate completely. So I would say just scratch this, take it off and move on forward. Dual SIM, 5G and standby tray over here. There is a water resistant seal very strange there, USB 3.0 Type-C port. We have the first speaker at the bottom and the other one found in the earpiece. These are dual DTS-X Ultra speakers. We have a headphone jack and triple microphones, one at the top, one at the bottom, and one on the right-hand side. On the left-hand side, we have a volume rocker, game space switch, an intake fan vent. On the other side, we have the exhaust fan vent. We have the power button and of course the upgraded Pro shoulder triggers, which now have increased the touch sampling rate from 400 to 450 Hertz. We also have a third touch trigger, which is at the back. It is just a touch slide panel over there, which is pretty neat nonetheless. And the camera bump is much of a muchness compared to the Red Magic 6. Very tiny compared to other devices around, meaning that there shouldn't be much of a surface wobble effect when on a flat surface, but there is because the phone is pretty curved at the back. And talking about designs over here, I've never seen something quite like the 6S Pro, thanks to that half cutout transparent back. It is also slightly lighter at 215 grams and just 9.5 millimeters in thickness. But what about that display? Well, it is indeed the same panel that we saw on the Red Magic 6 Pro before. It's 20 by nine aspect ratio, 6.8 inch AMOLED display. It is full HD plus. We have 100% DCI-P3 color gamut rating, 700 nits peak brightness, 165 Hertz refresh rate, 720 Hertz touch sampling rate. And comparing the color accuracy to other phones around, even the Red Magic Brothers on the left hand side. It is just as color popping as those and just as color accurate too. It is even as color accurate, well, as white balance accurate as it can get when it comes to smartphones, especially when it comes to a gaming phone. And that wonderful 700 nits peak brightness is slightly higher than the Red Magic 6 and 6 Pro that we saw before it, but not the highest around. It is still nice, vibrant and bright, of course. We don't have a notch here. Instead, we have the selfie camera on the border at the top. And of course, we have that 165 hertz refresh rate, which matches the Red Magic 6 and 6 Pro before it. We have the Red Magic 6R all the way on the left, which is capped at 144 hertz as well as the ROG Phone 5 and the ZTE Accent 30 is capped at 120 hertz. All of these refresh rates, in my opinion, do the job pretty well, but the 165 hertz is just so darn smooth. It is adaptive and you can fix the refresh rates in developer options. Of course, we can fiddle with the brightness levels as well as the screen color preferences. We also have dark mode over here, which gives us a nice dark deep black in third party apps as well as first party apps over here. And it does darken things on the home screen 
2 as well as the notification shade. And yes, we do have an always on display. No surprise this time around. Of course, we've seen it for quite some time from Nubia Red Magic team. And it looks pretty great. You can customize slightly. They do have the animated ones, which look great. I prefer the more simple standard ones. We do now have a seventh generation under display fingerprint sensor. And yes, it can now detect your heart rate. So let's see how it compares to my Galaxy Watch Active 2. And it's pretty much neck and neck. Pretty impressive on your first try. Team Red at Red Magic. Now, comparing that fingerprint sensor to other ones around, it is similar to the Red Magic 6 and 6R, but it seems to be a tad quicker than those, a tad quicker than the ROG Phone 5, and once again, a tad quicker than the ZT Accent 30. We do have facial recognition over here, though it is 2D Face ID, and it is, once again, on par with other Red Magic devices, slightly slower than other phones around, though remember this is just using the selfie cam. Talking about selfie cams, it is an eight megapixel selfie snapper. Same one that we saw on the 6 Pro. It looks pretty decent if you ask me, but portrait mode doesn't really seem to work. This is Technic recording a 1080p at 30 frames per second selfie video on the brand new Red Magic 6S Pro. Of course, the selfie video is capped at 1080p and 30 FPS. It doesn't look too bad at night taking a pick at night doesn't have a night mode option but turning the flash on looks a hell of a lot better and at the back we are welcome to a 64 megapixel Samsung GW3 main sensor an 8 megapixel Hynix HI846 ultra wide snapper and a 2 megapixel macro sensor the 8 megapixel ultra wide doesn't look too bad 64 megapixel made looks pretty great the 16 megapixel bin looks even better thanks to AI doing the two times digital zoom since there's lack of a telephoto camera over here five times digital doesn't look too bad 10 times is the max zoom, doesn't look the best around. And you can get up close and personal thanks to the included two megapixel macro sensor, which is one of the best ones that I've tested around. Of course, we can also test out the bokeh effect over here. And honestly, it does just as great of a job as I've seen from premium camera flagship devices. We can also record 8K at 30 frames per second. This is the maximum resolution and the maximum frame rate that we can actually use at 8K. We can bump that up to 60 FPS when recording at 4K, which looks nice and smooth, even smoother than 8K, of course, jumping up to 60 fps still nice and crispy thanks to the 4k resolution 1080p dumbs down the detail a bit but gives us an even smoother experience over here since it has to do less processing to render this video and 1080p at 60 frames per second with anti-shake off and anti-shake on does make a bit of a difference when you do decide to enable it 4k 60 fps at night doesn't look the best no night video over here 1080p 60 fps doesn't look the best either but you guys have got to remember this is a gaming smartphone 8 megapixel ultra wide at night not really the best but the night mode on looks average as well as the digital zoom shots with night mode on and off once again, guys, this is a gaming phone. Gaming is what it's all about, not taking photos. But if the time does arrive where you do need to take a snap here and then, it still does a more than decent job. Of course, we have Red Magic OS version 4 skinned over Android 11 over here. It is literally as stock as Android gets in terms of gaming smartphones. I haven't seen a gaming smartphone do it as well as Red Magic have done over here. Of course, we have things such as split screen and all these extra widgets to flare up the OS skin that tad bit adding the cherry on top to make it even more enjoyable. And yes, Google services work with Google Discover on their left-hand side, as well as, hey, Google, Google Assist, of course. The haptics are just as solid as the 6 and 6 Pro. But how do the speakers stack up against the Red Magic 6 and ROG Phone 5? Of course, that fan at the back is not just for looks. It is actually a 20,000 revolutions per minute turbo fan intake from the left, exhaust from the right hand side. And though it looks stunning, it actually does a fantastic job of sucking air through the left hand side and shooting air out the right hand side as you would expect. But how loud does it get? Of 
Of course, we have the same ICE 6.0 cooling that we saw in the Red Magic 6 and 6 Pro, though we're lacking the aircraft aluminum backplate that we saw on the 6 Pro. We have now been treated to PCM. PCM is a new aerospace grade phase change material, which apparently upgrades the multi-dimensional cooling system overall. You can, of course, enable the LED effect on the fan, that RGB light that you see within the fan, or disable it if you don't like it, turning it on and off over here. I must say it is really striking when it is enabled. We do have the LED logo at the bottom, though unfortunately the logo in the center of the phone does not light up. Those two will just have to do. Personally, I think they look great. Flicking the switch at the top left corner of the phone, we are welcome to GameSpace 4.0. Slightly different, not quite sure why there's Chinese writing over here. This is indeed the global variant. Nevertheless, it will get changed with a software update, I'm pretty sure. Going into a game, jumping into that GameSpace overlay over here, you can see that some things have changed. We now have infinite performance mode instead of super performance mode, and I'm sure it does just as great of a job. We can also use pop-up windows, change FPS on the fly, jump into back recording, enable or disable the turbo fan, and yes, the FPS overlay has still stuck around. We do have charge separation as we've seen from the last year from Red Magic, and of course the upgraded pro shoulder triggers. We don't only have them improved, but we have an extra one on the back plates over here, which is impressive to say the least. It doesn't always work, but when it does, feels really cool, and I have no doubt that they will improve this going forward. It is a nice little addition to the Red Magic 6 series devices. We can, of course, change things to single press, long press, multi-operation, dual operation, press and lift for separate operations, and the back one can be used to slide for a single or dual operation. Our first game over here is Genshin Impact, throwing things on the highest possible graphics as well as the max frames per second. The game is capped at 60 FPS, even though the phone can go all the way up to 165, the game itself is capped at 60, and the Red Magic 6S Pro is doing a fantastic job, keeping it between 48 and 60 frames per second. The Mi Mix 4 with the same chipset went all the way down to 17 frames per second. PUBG Mobile now unlocks on day one of the Red Magic 6S Pro launch, 90 frames per second, and keeps things nice and close to 90, even exceeding my expectations, jumping all the way up to 92 FPS. Bullet Force is another game with an unlimited frame rate cap over here, and we're sitting between 145 and exceeding the 165 hertz refresh rate, once again going all the way up to 168 frames per second. Dead Trigger 2, another game with no frames per second cap over here, keeping it a little bit on the lower end of the 100 hertz refresh rate, 108 to 164 FPS, though still very impressive since the graphics have upped the ante since the previous game we tested. Real Racing 3 cannot adjust the graphics or FPS, frame rate is uncapped over here, and we are sitting between 151 and 167 frames per second. But what about benchmarks? Testing out that wonderful Snapdragon 888 Plus CPU chipset. Of course, at the start, we we're going to be checking the battery percent as well as the temperature. We will be turning the cooling fan on the fast cooling option over here and we'll be using GameSpace 4.0 with infinite performance to jump through and to version 9, Geekbench version 5 as well as 3D Mark Wildlife version 2 and getting to the results of the battery drain right now. We managed to get a drain of 9% with a rate of 25.3 milliamp hours per minute. And while the temperature did increase by 21.8 degrees in Celsius, you have to remember that even with three air conditioners in my house, Shanghai is still ridiculously hot right now. When this score popped up, I could not believe my eyes. 884,527 points in Antutu version 9.1.4. This is the single highest Antutu score I have ever seen in the world, let alone on my channel, trumping other phones with the same chipset. Things aren't quite as impressive when it comes to single core score in Geekbench, putting it right at the bottom. But when you look at multi-core score over here, it actually comes out right on top compared to all of these other devices. And while the Honor Magic 3 Pro Plus with the same Snapdragon 888 Plus chipset slightly outdid the Red Magic 6S Pro when it comes to 3D Mark, wildlife testing out GPU performance over here, it only beat it by a 0.1 frames per second where the Red Magic 
6S Pro got a crazy score of almost 6000 and 35.4 FPS, trumping all that below it. The Red Magic 6S Pro is sure to be a head turner thanks to that transparent cutout on its backplate, revealing the incredible RGB cooling fan alongside some of the phone's hardware specifications. It looks absolutely phenomenal, but my only request is that next time they allow us to see the actual components of the phone instead of cardboard cutouts. The 6S Pro's camera system is still more than capable to take some great looking pictures and videos, but the trio of cameras hasn't changed for some time and I'd like to see the addition of a telephoto camera. The 7th generation under display fingerprint sensor is accurate and snappy and the addition of a heart rate monitor is definitely a welcomed bonus. The newly added widgets make the already great software experience even more enjoyable and of course the display is just as vibrant and colorful as the 6 Pro before it and still packs in the super fluid 165Hz refresh rate but now ups the ante with a 720Hz touch sampling rate. And when paired with the new GameSpace software upgraded Snapdragon 888 Plus chipset, 16 gigs of LPDDR5 RAM and 256 gigs of UFS 3.1 storage holds and dominates any game you throw at it. And let's not forget about the snappier touch shoulder triggers 3.5 millimeter headphone jack as well as the impressive 20,000 revolutions per minute turbo fan which shines through the transparent backplate with RGB lights. While the Red Magic 6S Pro is a monster of a device when standing on its own, there are a few other phones out there looking to take top spot. The ZTE Axon 35G is one of them with its massive 6.92 inch display and impressive under display selfie camera, but the Red Magic 6S Pro bolsters ahead in terms of design, gaming features and performance. Its little brother, the Red Magic 6R is a great addition to the family and brings an incognito gaming experience to the smartphone world but lacks fast 66 watt charging, a cooling fan, and a 165Hz refresh rate. The ROG Phone 5 and 5S do certain things better than the Red Magic 6S Pro, but lack the impressive 165Hz refresh rate and internal cooling fan, not to mention they cost quite a bit more money. The Red Magic 6 and 6 Pro are still very great gaming phones, and while it doesn't make sense to upgrade to the 6S Pro if you already own one of them, the fact that the Red Magic 6S Pro costs the same price makes it a no-brainer purchase for anyone looking to upgrade from last year's Red Magic 5 series devices. And if you are looking to upgrade from the Red Magic 6 Pro, I wouldn't blame you. After all, you can actually see an RGB LED fan rotating in the 6S Pro's transparent backplate, making the Red Magic 6S Pro one of the best looking devices I have ever tested.